friends, first and foremost, I thank God Almighty for His abundant blessing that He has bestowed upon us. I thank our youth leader of ZTSBC for the privilege to testify God's name through this short message. My message to you is serve God while you are young. So friends, who are called God's servant? Well, God's servant are those who take part in church activities, who preach and perform on the stage, missionaries who proclaim the gospel of Christ, and apart from that, it includes all those activities we do, such as helping the needy, being kind, giving service to others, and the list can go on. One of the best stages in our life to serve God is while we are young. So the question remains, how do we serve God? What should we do to serve Him? In simple words, even though we are not called to be preachers and teachers of God's Word or lead people, there are still millions of ways to serve God in the best way possible, like helping the parents, praying for others, follow His commandments, worship Him, have faith in Him, and acknowledge Him in everything we do, friends. That's the best way to serve God. Sometimes we get exhausted and discouraged. At the time, I want you to remember the Bible verse in Matthew 20, verse 28. There it says, Just as the Son of Man did not can to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many, blessed are those who willingly serve God, both in good times and in bad times. Remember, friends, the more we get closer to God, the more obstacles we have to face. To God, look my sharing. I want you all to remember the Bible verse in Mark chapter 9, verse 35. Jesus said, If anyone wants to be first, must be the very last and the servant of all. Amen. God bless you. Hi everyone. Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a great privilege for me to exhort each and every one of us through this social media. First of all, I would also like to give thanks to our youth leader, Mr. Aketo Yoto, for giving me this opportunity. And also, on behalf of all the youth from the Total Suite of this church, would like to thank him for bringing us into this manner and for bringing such innovative ideas, programs, and bringing our youth to expose their talents to glorify God. I pray and we pray that our God will continue to bless him and strengthen him. Let me tell you, I am not a good speaker, nor am from a theological background, but I proudly take this moment as I am a saved Christian by the grace of God. First of all, let us all look to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 1, where it says, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth. I would like to focus only on these few first sentences, remembering our Creator in the days of our youth. The scripture specifically signifies and specifically mentions about the youthhood. Now let us assume and let us take the opinion or let have a view about the youthhood. What is actually a youthhood? Who are the youth? Many views that youth it is an age or it is a good of uh, adoption. Some say it is an energetic days, some say it is an adaptive sensibility, some say it is a curious stage, some say it is a frustration days, some say it's a happy go lucky type, some say it is very curious to know about happenings, or even some say it's a frustration or careless, carefree, the list goes endless. 
So the Bible is specifically a trust or specifically mentioned about the Newton. I would like to call Costello words where he has written in his journal in a challenge to today's Christian youth where he says many people tend to think of today's youth as the leader of tomorrow but scripture never places youth in such a category it never instructed the youth to wait until he or she is more mature knowledgeable or skilled before they begin to take god's word seriously and consider what plans and proposes the lord has for our lives but according to the scripture, the youth are to be leader even today while earnestly desire to honor and serve our Lord in all of our thoughts and action. So dear brothers and sisters, why do we wait for a reason? Why do we wait for a season? Or why do we wait for a month, a year? Or why do we wait to equip? Or why do we wait to become skillful? Why do we wait for the right time. Indeed, youthhood is the right time to know your Creator, to serve the Lord with full your mind, with full your strength, and with all of your heart. As Paul said to Timothy, a young man in the faith, so why not you and I, and brothers and sisters, we would like to see the scripture from 1 uh, Timothy chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. Verse 11 says to command and teach, and where verse 12 says, to lead in example, in word, in conversation, in charity, in purity, in faith, and so on. So the scripture specifically announced the youth to lead in word, to lead in conversation, to lead in charity, to lead in spirit, to lead in faith, and to lead in purity. We should take into this consideration and we should take this into importance. Some of us may think, or some of the youth may think, we as a cool youth in this generation, we are very busy every second, or most probably when we are busy with our smart gadget, or most probably when we are busy with ongoing activities to perform, to do, how on earth we can get all this or acquire all this at one go, when we are battling with our one unique habitual behavior. But dear brothers and sisters, when we really look into the matter and when we really look into the word of God, we can lead. We can lead because according to Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Dear brothers and sisters, to become or to lead, we don't need some super qualities or we don't need to acquire knowledgeable skills or we don't need to be smart enough. The only thing we need to do is know your creator, know my creator, know he is a personal savior, know he is my personal savior. The moment you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, the moment you know that your Creator, who is your Creator, and for what purpose He has brought us into this world, your future, my future is secure. Now some of us may think that how can in these circumstances or in this situation our future can be secure? Secure. Let us look into this present scenario when we look into the matter, the frontline pages, the debate, the burning issues. It's all about COVID-19. When our economy is crumbling and when our life seems to be the majority, how can we live and how can we make our future secure? Dear brothers and sisters, COVID-19 might be just a small start and who knows something far more worse might be coming. So preparing for worse is wise. At this juncture, we really need to know that our hope is built on Christ only. And in this crisis situation, we have to keep faith and hope in Christ. And still we can live in the world and still we can live in conversation. When all of your economy must be crumbling, but still you can live in charity. When your life seems hopeless, frustration and nothing else, but still you can live in word, live in faith, live in purity. Because when we have Jesus, we have all the answer. So dear brothers and sisters, Know your creator in the days of your youth. May God bless us all. Thank you.